Philip Lewis and the Bad Hair Day Lectures. This is Bad Hair Day. Okay, my hair looks terrible. So, But um, I always like to talk about things like interpretation, how we interpret reality, how we interpret things. See, reality is more than just what our senses tell us. It's, what, it's literally the sense we make of it. See, think about when you're reading something. One day when I was at work in another job where I had to open up transcripts all the time. I had to open up these student transcripts. And, you know, it's not like I hadn't seen this before, but it was just a moment of reflecting on the fact that I'm looking at this writing in Chinese because there was like transcripts written in Chinese. They always had to send the transcripts with the with the um, with the um, in both Chinese and English because you know occasionally somebody will send you something written totally in a foreign language. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, we don't even know what a name is. It could be you know, especially if it's written in different lettering system, like in Greek. We could probably figure it out if we hear something in Spanish or French or Italian. We could know, okay, this is the student's name. We could probably look it up or set it off to the side or give it what they call it. We used to call it a dummy number. But if we see something in Chinese, we don't know. That could be somebody could have actually sent us a menu to a restaurant and shit. <laughs> but anyway, they had to always send the uh, the. Uh, a translation in English. So I'm looking at the Chinese part of it. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at this and I don't understand what that says. See, it made me realize about when we say in everyday speech, things make sense. And it made me realize how untrue that everyday statement is. Things don't make sense. When you're reading a book, you look at the writing and say, oh, this makes sense. Next page, oh, this makes sense. Next page, this makes No, it doesn't. But, Nobody argues with that because, and nobody questions that. Because it's practical. People know what you mean. But, see, writing doesn't make sense because if it did, when I looked at that writing in Chinese, I would have understood it in an instant. Because it would have made sense. But things don't make sense. I kind of got into my big philosophical thinking about it and analyzing and all the stuff I learned from David Hume to analyze the shit out of things and look at it and sort of like, oh, you no, know, things don't make sense. What is a more accurate statement is we make sense of things. We take things in the world and we interpret it. See, when I used to work as a translator at Cook County Hospital, I was always referred to officially as an interpreter. We didn't refer to you as, we didn't refer to someone as a translator. We would say an interpreter. And I thought, yeah, that's more accurate. Because what you do is you're taking something and you're making sense of it and giving it to someone else. You're interpreting. See, I think scientists are interpreters. They're like interpreters of nature and interpreters of phenomena. They take something that they observe and they make sense of it in a language whether it be mathematics or using all the technical language, they interpret that and give it to the rest of us so we can look at it. You know, if we're educated enough. And some people who are very educated can take that more sophisticated way of saying it and stating it that only very educated people can understand. And they can interpret it in a way that the average person with an average education level, or maybe a high school education at least, could understand it. You get to higher levels of interpretation, the more educated you are. But still, the difference between the lower levels of education and the higher levels is levels of becoming more sophisticated in your interpretation of things. Kind of gets me into something Einstein said. He said that the difference between scientific thinking and everyday thinking is a matter of refinement. And I think that's true. But I think that, again, science is a matter of interpreting. And so is everyday life. We see things and we make sense of it. Things don't make sense. But that's everyday speech. And it's practical. It's pretty much pragmatic. It's, it's like we just say that. But that's not reality. More accurate reality-based way of saying it is we make sense of things. We see something and we make sense of it. I was thinking about you know how people might have interpreted things in the past. You know, like when people come back from the dead, when people are resurrected, 
and stuff like that. Well, here's what might be the case. By today's modern standards, you know, a person dies. Think about this. It's just a thought. It's all just a thought. A person dies. They stop breathing. There's no heartbeat. All the indications are this person is dead. So you prepare them for a funeral. Prepare the body. Do everything you got to do. And let's say you don't bury them. You put them in a cave. Which I'm sure that was common in the old days. Where if you had caves around. You know, you put the body in a cave. You might cover the cave up with a rock or whatever. And go away. And the family would say, okay, that's it. It's over. The person is dead. Two, three days later, maybe even a week later, that person is wandering around. Looking, trying to get back home. And they come back to your doorstep. And there they are. That person was dead. They were resurrected. They were brought back from the dead. But in fact, by modern standards, we might interpret it this way. The person was in a coma. People assumed, even the physicians of those days several thousand years ago, of course they're not like physicians of today. They don't have the modern equipment. In fact, even in today's world, a person could, heartbeat could be so slow that even with a stethoscope, you wouldn't detect it. Somebody's breathing could be so shallow you wouldn't see it or notice it. Your pupils can be dilated. All indications could be that that person is dead. There are specific things you have to do to accurately diagnose it. Yes, death is a diagnosis. You have to do certain things to make sure that that person is dead. Because there have been cases, even in our modern world, where people were misdiagnosed as being dead. And then later on, they were discovered to be alive. So, just think two, three thousand years ago. People interpreted things a certain way. They, the sense they made of it was God brought that person back. You know. Or well, somebody who's wishing that person was still alive. Well, their wishes made it come true. They came back to life. It's always a matter of interpretation. What does it mean? What sense are we going to make of it? It's just something to think about. We're just things in life. How we make sense of things. Again, as I said before, things don't make sense. We make sense of things. And that's the truth. Something to think about. Like my bad hair day. Maybe my hair don't look so bad. Maybe it looks cool. <laughs> I don't know. 